I feel like Art Center is a college where the benchmark is really set by the insane faculty over there, like folks like Scott Robertson, Tim Flattery, like they are veteran designers working in the industry and just crazy creative geniuses. So how was the uh, the communication between students and folks like Scott while he was teaching you? What, what were the uh, conversations like between you guys? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I can't speak to how it is now it was just like a crazy mm -hmm. time but but right. but you're right it was like I, I kind of feel like I kind of came in at just like this sort of timed it somewhat perfectly I think right. there was a, maybe a couple of years before or after me where things were also pretty amazing right. but it felt like this sort of Goldilocks time there where um Scott was sort of at the helm mm -hmm. and then he he had designed this program which was in its infancy at the time like right. brand new this entertainment focused program because I guess at, prior to that there was like people just sort of, they did illustration or they did industrial design. Right, right. And then they would sort of like try and just draw spaceships in, in, mm -hmm. in their industrial design program or whatever, and then sort of find their way into the entertainment industry. And this was, at least to my knowledge, the first program that was very built from the ground up, you know, designed to get people into entertainment um, concept right. design um, at like an accredited school. Um, and, and so Scott sort of, built this bespoke program um and he at the time was accepting very few students and so that's why there i had to jump through these hoops of like starting an illustration and then applying in um so there's like a there's a portfolio review process to get into the school and then there's a separate portfolio review process to get into the program i see so okay. they they whittled down the number of students so i think i was in a class of like i want to say it was like 30 students or something mm -hmm. um and then, and that was all they accepted for the year. Right. Um, and then they... Was the number because they were still trying to figure out what this course would be like, or it was just because uh, only no, the best it was, get to it was, come in? <laughs> yeah, it was Scott's, uh, Scott's sort of brainchild of like, he wanted to design this program that was very um, focused. And right. so he wanted the students to be... Um, permitted to like have a, like you're saying like a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the instructors mm -hmm. and he was um you know he would pick in instructors out of industry that were currently working and I think that was some of the secret sauce of the program of like he would pick people who were currently working on films right. and then say come teach a, a class for me once a week you know it's three hours of your time or whatever but then you got you got like current information Right. You got you got to hear from people who are currently working about current industry sort of practices right. um, as opposed to um, some instructors, which we st still had plenty that were like this, that were like they were full time instructors. And then so like some of their. You know, the industry moves so fast that some mm -hmm. of their information might be like applicable to when they were working. But, you know, if they haven't been working for a couple decades, then that information may not be as. Uh, you know, up to date. So I think that uh -huh. was sort of the the thinking was like keep the class sizes small and then mm -hmm. pull people from industry. And then he he had sort of designed the program that was um there was a uh like a very thoughtful approach to like the order of the classes. Like we'll do mm -hmm. this class first and this sort of foundation foundational classes first and then um but it it was all centered around entertainment as opposed to right. you know other other programs that were more i guess i guess i guess that's what i'm trying to say is like it was so interesting it was it was night and day for me to go from a, a school that i felt like i was getting this very general vague education in art and it was kind of like touching all things into this one that was like very very focused okay. um um and and very like particular in the order that you took classes and the, you know the specifics of the of what each class was teaching you and building upon itself like it, it was very well put together program and mm -hmm. and now I think it's been it's been sort of copied a lot like mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of programs out there that I think sort of took that approach but at the time it was very at least to my knowledge very novel um and and definitely seemed to sort of prepare me I mean I can't 
I can't complain no. for for where I ended up. Um, hey, of course, I mean, out. yeah, uh, but so right now you work as a creature designer. I feel creature design is a very specific line yeah. of work, right? So when did that start resonating with you? Was that during your education uh, at Art Center or as you kind of started stepping into the yeah. industry, you found your niche? essentially. Yeah. I mean, I was always in interested in, I think like characters and mm -hmm. creatures. And then it turns out like, as I sort of learned about more about, um, the industry, like it, it, um, I guess in the film industry, it's like to a lot, a lot of times, I mean, it's, it changes from project to project, but a lot of times yeah. it's like to work on characters, you're kind of working on the costume design of course right um so you're working for a costume designer and then like creatures are their own separate discipline from that so there's there's these like specific niches and so there's artists that tend to work on sets and there's artists that mm -hmm. tend to work on vehicles or you know props that sort of like yeah. yeah yeah and those are like all pretty specific separate disciplines there's artists that cross over uh -huh. um um but I guess once I sort of discovered that, I was like, oh, I got really, you know, excited by creatures. I just found out in school and and the character stuff became less interesting to me than the creature stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I still like explored it all and, and can do and did do, you know, environment stuff and set stuff and, um, and props and vehicles and blah, blah, blah. But uh, so... Yeah, I don't know if that answers the no, no, question. Of course I think it lost my train of thought. No, no, I def it definitely does. Because uh, the one thing that I also found very interesting, because as I'm researching, I'm looking through your Instagram posts and everything, <laughs> you're, you're one of the artists who really gives very interesting educational explainers to your images. And I almost get a glimpse of how the thinking process has been for you as you're working on a certain design task for a certain concept in, for a film. Right. So do you, do you find that interest in teaching at some point? Does that something, is that something that you want to pursue at some point? Uh, I have taught uh, a little bit in the uh -huh. past. Uh, just like, you know, I, I, a lot of my friends run these like, um, you know, smaller, like more a la carte schools, like where right. it's just like, you know, single class sort of entertainment stuff. Right. I, I haven't, how do I want to say this? I, find that I am at this point in my career like teaching at least rather than other than just maybe occasionally mm -hmm. is not something that I'm that interested in right now right, right, right. Um, <laughs> um, like occasionally I teach like little classes or like workshops and stuff and that stuff is interesting to me I have mm -hmm. found that when I when I was teaching more frequently I just was not enjoying it as much as just working or right. um yeah so at least for me where I am right now it it's so interesting like I would take you know getting back to I guess sort of the prior discussion it was interesting to find that like there were instructors just because someone is a talented artist or skilled artist doesn't make them a good instructor I agree. and 100 percent and yeah <laughs> so um there were definitely people who were but like that person who i don't know like there are people who are who are devoted instructors who are it's very good that they're you know that's their calling and that's what they want to do and, and right. they put their all into it um and i just i don't know if that was in my experience at least so far that's for me but mm -hmm. I, I do enjoy occasionally teaching little little workshops or smaller classes and stuff right Right, because yeah. I think I think the education side like intrigues me because we have noticed the industry uh, it develops quite exponentially fast uh, yeah. with with the tools developing over and over again. Within a year, you receive so many different updates as to how to even use certain new tools. So yeah, I, I wonder how the education system around design adapts to that as well. Because like in times like today, I do I don't. I don't really know what role does art center essentially play uh, as a pillar, like an educational pillar, essentially. Uh, but what what would you think 
as to like what what is that unique experience at art center that you can you kind of took with you and it still kind of you know stays with you at this point well the philosophy at the time for that program was mm -hmm. and and i and this is something i sort of still subscribe to is like the techniques and the, the tools and the software are going to change and right. um and they're going to change multiple times in our careers and they've yeah. already changed i mean things were changing in while i was in school the tools were changing right. like from when i started school to when i finished school like there was like this big transition from like um you know digital 2d software to digital 3d software and like i you know when i was working you know i met artists that had trans transitioned multiple times that and some of them had started in you know, uh, traditional media and then right. had been working so long that they had transitioned into digital 2D software and then again transitioned into digital 3D software. And so like, I've met people that have started their careers on pencil and then are now in ZBrush or whatever, right? Right. Um, and, and so I guess that was sort of a, a lesson and something that was drilled into us that the, um, the software and the tools will change and you just have to accept that and, and stay up to date with that. Right. Um, but what will, what they sort of drilled into us was that what will separate you and will, will set you apart is your thinking mm -hmm. and your, your sort of design approach. And I think that's something that has been very, um, you know, I've been very fortunate in my career and I think that, that so far at least. Um, and I think that that's something that's been really um, helpful for me is just, I try at least to bring something to the table other than just my wrist. Right. Um, and, you know, obviously like the, the, the designs are, um, you know, the brainchild of the director or the production designer, but I, I still am able to bring something to the table. I'm not just, I, uh, Sometimes I am, but sometimes I am, um, uh, sometimes I, I guess I'm just executing their vision, you know, mm -hmm. the, the client's vision, but then other times they're asking me for my input and, right. and it's, it's a collaborative sort of problem solving. And I think that's something that has sort of given me a little bit of a, I would hope at least like a competitive edge of mm -hmm. like, you know, regardless of what medium is in vogue or what what everybody's working in like the you can't replicate um i'm the only one that can offer my services okay. right because it, it's it's my brain that i'm bringing to the table right like my sort of design sense and aesthetic and um and uh and i think with uh you know very successful people that i've worked with who are who are more senior than me i have i've noticed that with them right like um that they're they're good problem solvers they're they have interesting ideas um right. and and they're not just like painting pretty pictures right that's not the only thing that they bring to the table mm -hmm.